Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to Quilt Along number 37 on the Free Motion Quilting Project. This week, we're again back on Batik Beauty, stitching in the sashing, and this time trying out a new design called Jagged Lines. Basically, it's the same premise, same idea as Flowing Lines, a design we've learned previously in the Quilt Along, only now all the lines are straight and angles are sharp. So it's going to be a slightly different feel and a very different texture. Let's get on the machine and see how it works. Let's start with a little review of the different designs we've learned so far this month. We've learned flowing lines, this nice fluid organic design with these open gaps. Kind of creates a nice open texture in your quilt. Then we basically stitched the same design and filled those areas with stippling. That creates a slightly different texture. And then one more variation is, again, the same flowing, design, flowing lines with these big gaps filled with paisley. And this is a really great way to practice stitching paisley and pivoting designs. Now let's uh, change gears and try this out one more time. Uh, a couple more times, actually. This week and next week we're going to try out two more designs using the same formula. And this time we are going to stitch uh, some straight lines and sharp angles. And basically it's the same flowing line design, only this time jagged lines because everything's going to be nice. Straight lines, sharp angles. Here we go. Again, this is an edge-to-edge -edge design, so I'm going to be working along the edges of this block, stitching, uh, travel stitching along both edges, uh, and just simply running along these ditch lines that were already stitched when I filled these blocks with other, de other designs. Here we go. Pull up my bobbin thread, tuck them underneath my foot, and get started. We're going to start with just simply a zigzaggy line working from edge to edge. Now I'm going to travel stitch and echo that line. And just like before, now I'm going to form a gap line by zigzagging off. Now this is a narrower area, so I'm going to zigzag out and then come back in and place the gap, uh, basically going from the full edge to edge. If I had a bigger, longer area, I'd probably do multiple gap spaces, uh, but this is pretty limited, so I'm going to kind of keep it small. Travel stitch down, travel stitch over, and echo back up. Okay, let's form another gap line. Travel stitch along that edge and then echo back up. Now if you start getting worried that your gaps aren't noticeable enough, if you really want them to show up, all you have to do is either stitch more uh, jagged lines echoes uh, next to one another in a row or simply make them a little bit more narrow, bring them closer together, and then the gaps will become a lot more obvious. It's really up to you because the closer that the lines get together, the more dense your quilt is going to feel. I want to form another gap, and I'm going to hit it out here. So I've travel stitched along the top of the block to give myself a lot of space. And now I'm going to zigzag and get to this point.
design is going to feel a little different because you're not stitching wiggly lines. Straight lines and sharp angles will just simply feel differently as you stitch them. So play with it and see which one works best for you. Now I'm just simply going to stitch in and fill into this area. As I work off the edge of the block, I'm going to stitch a zigzaggy line to connect these two blocks together so that way I have something to work off of. There's a lot of different options for stitching across sashing, but that's the option I like the best. So that is jagged lines. Now I did make a mistake in, right here and stitched off of a line I was travel stitching and it's pretty noticeable in this quilt, in this particular design that I messed up right there and I don't want to go back in and just try and cover it up with more stitching. Sometimes that just doesn't work if you stitch off considerably. So I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see. Instead I'm going to hide the mistake by simply covering it up by coloring it in. This is a black Pigma pen, and I'm just simply coloring out the stitches that I want to hide. Of course, of course you'll want to test and uh, make sure to heat set to make sure that that works on your quilt, but that is a tip that a lot of people use for hiding mistakes when there's just a subtle stitch off. So that is jagged lines stitched in the Batik Beauty quilt. So that's it for this tutorial. I really hope that you'll give jagged lines a try and stitch it out in the sashing of one of your quilts. Sashing is one of those areas that a lot of people leave blank and empty and open and that's a real shame because it's a wonderful place to play with a lot of different textures for your quilts. Of course, if you're looking for different designs, a wider variety, check out this book. This is 365 free motion quilting designs. And within the book, you'll have some nice, beautiful pictures of all the designs posted to the project between 2009 and 2011. Hundreds of designs to choose from. No, it's not a tutorial how-to guidebook. It's a photo book. It's a picture book meant to be inspirational and show you many, many different designs. All of these designs have videos posted to the project, so you can look up their names, find their videos, and learn how to stitch them in your quilts. Of course, if you have any questions about this particular video, definitely get on the Free Motion Quilting Project, ask your questions, post any comments that you have about it, and of course, link up, share a photo or a, uh, even a video, if you want to, um, of you stitching out the design and your take on it. 
and ask any questions that you have about it. We're linking up and following along, quilting along together, so that way we can all get the hang of free motion quilting on our own quilts. And you can find all of that information and more at freemotionproject.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.